Dengan pengalaman data dengan BNTC, dengan pengalaman data dengan BNTB kan, apa yang BNTB. Tengok semua kursus yang diambil. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Okay, let's start our session. Session. So, 10 minutes now. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning. Okay, welcome to our first webinar session in 2022. Okay, today I'm Dr. Zuraini Osman from Jawatan Kuasa ICT dan Masyarakat, Fakulti Teknologi Maklumat dan Komunikasi University Technical Malaysia Melaka and um, a new member of UTM Ross Community Group. Okay. This program is collaboration with Majlis Bandaraya Melaka Bersejarah in BNB because we want to close to the community so we get uh, collaboration with MBNB. Okay, now, Alhamdulillah, from the registration link, I found that most participants are from community, which is outside UTEM and uh, MBNB itself. Okay, actually this initiative with MBNB had been conducted since two years ago, which is sharing session on technology to community. Alhamdulillah, still can pro proceed to fulfill the new new situation. Okay, actually with MBNB, we had started the collaboration with robotic competition previously around 2018, I think. Okay. Before that, for particip participant, please fill the registration form with a link that I paste in the chat. Okay, for those who already submitted the registration form previously, no need to fill it again. Thank you to those who already filled it. Okay, I press it in the chat. Okay. Um, okay. So during this session, if you have question, you may ask and if there are those committee members here, you may answer also. And to all participants, you are allowing to give your opinion also. And please open your mind and introduce yourself if you have question or you may type in the chat. Okay, at the end of the session. Okay, inshallah, from this program, we will start with some good linkage among us. Okay, without further ado, let's start our webinar entitled Introduction to Robot Operating System, Rose and its Application. Okay, our today's speaker is Mr. Amiru Jamaluddin. He's a pelajar sajana kejurutaan elektronik from Fakulti Kejurutaan Elektronik dan Kejurutaan Komputer. Mr. Amiro, graduate research assistant, uh, and he doing a uh, slam for mobile robot using robot operating system and neural network. Okay, let uh, us pass to Mr. Amiro to continue this session. Okay, Amiro, you may start. Okay, uh, I will share the slide first. Can you look at the slide? Yes, can. Okay. Wait, eh? All right. Okay. 
Okay, uh, can we start now? Yes. Okay. Thank you to our moderator, Dr. Zuraini Binti Osman. Assalamualaikum and good morning. Uh, my fellow robot developer, how are you today? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, fine. I hope all of you uh, is negative from any sickness uh, or from Omicron and who is positive, I hope you get well soon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pergi ke kedai membeli buah, membeli juga kapur barus. Hari ini adalah hari yang sangat bertuah kerana pada hari ini, insya Allah, anda akan tahu apa itu ros. Jadi, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan hadirin hadirat yang dihormati sekalian, apakah itu ros, tuan-tuan? Ada yang pernah dengar tak ros ni apa? Ataupun ada yang pernah pakai ke sebelum ni? Okay, nampaknya uh, mungkin dalam ni ada uh, ataupun ada yang mungkin tak pernah dengar lagi. Jadi pada hari ini, uh, insyaAllah anda akan tahu apa itu ROS. So what is ROS actually? Is it an application or operating system or is it a robot that its name is ROS? So we don't know what ROS actually but we will know what it is today, insyaAllah. So Next slide. Okay, next slide. So there are five main questions need to be answered through this presentation. Ada lima persoalan yang akan dirungkai uh, pada webinar ini, pada hari ini. Uh, so the first question is, what is robotics? Second question is, what is ROS actually? Why ROS? Why if there is a robot, there is a ROS? And if there is a ROS, there is a robot. Why? Why choose ROS as our platform to build a robot? Why? So after we know why is robot, why is ROS, and why choose ROS to develop a robot, next we need to know how ROS works. And lastly, uh, what is the example of ROS application that have been developed using ROS? So these five questions will be answered through this presentation. So the first question is, what is robot? Apa sebenarnya robot? So there are four elements, there are four important elements that need to be considered in robotics. The first is actuator, which is mechanical engineering. Second is sensor, uh, which is in electronics engineering. And third is software uh, that act as a brain of the system of the robot which is software engineering. And lastly, of course, we need a power supply to move the robot. So this is uh, a simple example, a simple example of the robot. Uh, for example, uh, this is a robot that we call uh, a slapper ping pong ball. Uh, when it comes, when the ping pong ball comes near to the sensor, uh, it means the sensor is detect uh, the ping pong ball the motor will slap the ping pong ball. Uh, so how do we want uh, of this uh, sensor and this motor is cooperate together to slap the ping pong ball? How? So we need a software to act as a brain, okay? To act as a brain. And thanks to ROS, uh, the problem is uh, easy to solve by using ROS because ROS uh, as our software, ROS is a robotic software uh, that acts as a brain to control all of this system. Okay, understand now? Uh, where is robot? Uh, a little bit uh, a simple, a simple example. Uh, it means that if uh, you don't have actuator, uh, it means uh, it is not a robot. If you don't have sensor, it means uh, don't have uh, any uh, sense, don't have any camera. Uh, just actuator and software, uh, I think it's, it's not considered as a robot uh, or uh, because it cannot detect, it cannot detect the environment because robot is actually, okay. Okay. because robot is actually like us, human. Okay, uh, like human, us, we have brain. 
uh, so brand uh, in a robot uh, brand uh, is considered a software which is ROS that control all of our body uh, electronic uh, it's like our sense uh, our touch our eyes uh, so we can touch and we can see the environment and electrical engineering is like our heart uh, if we don't have our heart, maybe uh, we die a long time ago and then uh, we have a mechanical engineering uh, which is our body part so uh, now uh, this is a ROS, a ROS uh, introduction so we will focus on the software engineering which is act as our brain which is control uh, the sensors actions balancing navigation or detection and recognition all of the system uh, is controlled by the software which is we use ROS Okay, uh, if you can see this, uh, actually how is ROS works? Uh, so uh, this sensor and this actuator is actually uh, communicate, communicate by the API. Uh, we call it application programmable interface. Uh, like us, if you want to communicate uh, with uh, the machine or laptop, actually, uh, we call it GUI, Applicable User Interface. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we can click uh, some, uh, maybe uh, in front of you have a laptop. If you can click uh, the file or you can click the uh, maybe uh, the button, uh, it is called GUI. But how uh, this, how this uh, actuator and this sensor communicate each other? So we use API, we use application pro programmable interface which is uh, application pro programmable interface is uh, provided by ROS. Uh, it's, it is ROS API. So uh, this sensor and this actuator is communicate by message uh, and by topic and message. Uh, but uh, these tools later, uh, how ROS works, uh, this is uh, how ROS works, which is uh, the fourth question, how ROS works. Uh, this, uh, this thing will be explained later. So don't worry if you wait for the first time. You just need to know that uh, ROS make us easy uh, to uh, actuator and sensor is collaborate each other. Okay. Okay, next. Next, after we know what is robot, uh, we need to know uh, what is ROS. Uh, so uh, how ROS make us easy to perform uh, the task, the robot task. So before that, we need to know what is ROS actually. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, what is ROS? Firstly, ROS stands for Robot Operating System. Uh, like our phone or our laptop, our phone, the operating system is Android. Laptop, uh, the operating system is Windows or Linux, uh, if you heard Linux. So robot also have their operating system. So the robot operating system is uh, ROS. So if you want to operate the robot, we need a uh, ROS uh, to operate the robot. But is it ROS is a real operating system? Do you know operating system? Uh, like I said earlier, uh, it is uh, like uh, Android or Windows. Yeah, like that. But uh, ROS is not an operating system, actually. It is just a software framework for programming robots and it is meta operating system. Uh, what is the difference between operating system and meta operating system? Uh, is it actually, if operating system, uh, if we want to install operating system in our laptop, uh, like Windows, uh, we need uh, maybe RAM or hard disk. Uh, we need some hardware. We need some hardware to install the uh, operating system like Windows. But with ROS, if you, uh, you can install on the operating system. Meta operating system is means that uh, ROS operates on top of the operating system. It means that you can install it on the Windows or Linux or even an Android. Okay. ROS. Uh, so ROS is actually. Uh, is operating system that allows us to abstract 
the hardware from the software. Means that you can think in terms of software for all the hardware of the robot. So uh, ROS is built to encourage uh, collaborative robotic software development. So uh, before ROS is introduced, every robot had to be programmed using the manufacturer's own system, manufacturer's own application programmable interface. This, is, this means that if you make a new robot, you need to start again. You need to start again to program your robot. Furthermore, uh, you need to know a lot about uh, the mechanical and electronics part of the robot uh, because uh, uh, there is another uh, operating system that you need to uh, collaborate. So the situation of this uh, before ROS is introduced is similar to the computer in the 1980s when every computer has its own operating system and you had to start again, you, you need to start uh, a new program again to build a new computer. Uh, it's like uh, Windows. Uh, before Windows is introduced, you need uh, to program your computer uh, from, from a scratch again. But uh, after Windows is introduced, you just can, if you have a laptop, you can just install your Windows. Uh, so ROS same. Thanks to ROS, ROS makes us easy to build a robot. You just need to install ROS and then you can program your robot. Uh, that's why uh, it is encouraged uh, the robot developer to program a robot. Next is uh, ROS have four important elements. Uh, which is consists of plumbing, tools, capabilities, and ecosystem. Why is plumbing? Uh, plumbing is more to the infrastructure of the robot, which is how ROS works. Uh, that is a uh, fourth question will be answered later, uh, which is uh, the uh, more to application programmable interface. And second, ROS have tools. Uh, what tools that ROS provided to program a robot? So. ROS provides an extensive set of tools like configuring, starting the robot, simulation. Uh, if you don't have the hardware of the robot, you can do a simulation, uh, debugging, visualizing, logging, testing, and stopping the robot, uh, stopping the distributed computing system, uh, which is uh, if we know, if we, uh, if we have built uh, some robot, we know that uh, a robot have a computer system, uh, so uh, ROS can be installed in a distributed computing system, uh, and ROS uh, have a capabilities, which is uh, is provide a broad collection of libraries that implement useful robot functionality with a focus on mobility, manipulation, and perception. It means that uh, ROS have uh, have libraries. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you have a robot and you want the robot uh, to do a navigation, you just can take it from libraries, which is uh, ROS.origin or GitHub. You can install it and you can implement it on your robot. So uh, ROS have that capabilities. And lastly, ROS is an ecosystem, uh, which is uh, ROS is supported and improved by a large community with a strong focus on integration and documentation. And uh, for example, ROS the origin is a one-stop shopping for finding and learning about the thousand ROS of package. If you search, uh, if you search the ROS the origin, uh, you can find that uh, many uh, tools or many package or many uh, tutorials that you can learn uh, in this uh, ROS the origin. Okay. Okay, ROS is developed uh, from 2008. 2008. Uh, it, was, it was developed uh, just in a garage, uh, which is a robotic research lab. And now in, in 2013, uh, ROS stewardship uh, is transferred to the Open Source Robotics Foundation, and now it is open source. It means that it is free. You can just install. You can just install. It's free. You can use the package free, uh, and it's good for us as a developer or as a student 
uh, or as a lecturer, uh, you can use ROS. Uh, just it is uh, free and open source. Okay. So after we know what is ROS, uh, do you know now what is ROS? Can someone can someone uh, reply me? You know what is ROS now? So ROS is actually a software. Uh, it's not an operating system, but it's a software for to program a robot. Okay, it is a simple one. Simple. Okay. Okay. Now we know what is ROS. So. After we know what is ROS, why we chose why we choose ROS as our platform to develop a robot? Why? Why we uh, don't use another platform? Uh, maybe like Arduino. Uh, you know Arduino. Uh, why? Why we choose ROS? Firstly, because it is a distributed. Uh, it's a program can run on multiple computers and communicate over the network. Like I say. ROS can be installed and used to the most operating system. Uh, as we know, like Linux, Windows, Android, or Raspbian, uh, you can install ROS and use it in that computer. And although uh, this is this is computer and this is another computer, okay, uh, it means that this is one robot and this is one robot, you can communicate each other using ROS. Or this is as uh, one task and one task, uh, you can communicate each other. Uh, although this robot using another operating system, although this robot using another operating system, uh, because of ROS, you can communicate each other. Okay. And second is ROS is free and open source. You don't need to pay to use uh, some package or tools because it is free. And most ROS software is open source and free to use. And next is it is a uh, peer to peer, which is uh, uh, an individual program can communicate over the defined application programmable interface uh, by using ROS message, service, or topics, uh, an application pro programmable interface. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, it is like us. If we want to communicate uh, a program uh, to human, we use GUI, graphical user, user interface. But to communicate a program with a program, we use API, we use uh, application pro programmable interface, which is ROS API is the list of ROS topics, service, action servers, uh, and message that a given robot providing to give access to its hardware. It means uh, uh, this hardware, uh, this program, and this program is communicate each other using the application programmable interface. Okay. Uh, if you are not familiar with this, it's okay. After this, uh, we I will explain later. Okay, then, uh, ROS is a multilingual. Uh, ROS can be modules, can be read, uh, can be written in any language uh, for which, uh, like C++, Python, MATLAB, Java, the Arduino. Arduino only, Arduino is actually a microcontroller. Uh, it can only read a C or C++, but by using ROS, uh, you can module, you can write your coding uh, in C++, Python, MATLAB, or Java. Uh, it is very friendly to us, actually. And ROS is a lightweight. Uh, standalone libraries are wrapped around with a thin ROS layer that can run simultaneously. ROS is not a heavyweight. Heavyweight is like operating system. Heavyweight is uh, need to run in parallel. And it is uh, heavy, uh, but lightweight. Uh, you can run uh, simultaneously. Uh, in one command, you can run simultaneously. Uh, this program and this program, you can run simultaneously. Uh, it is uh, the meaning of lightweight. And uh, ROS is actually not an operating system. It is a software that can completely abstract the hardware from the software. So you can program a robot just by knowing the robot ROS API. It means that uh, before this, uh, the robot developer uh, need to focus uh, also in mechanical part of, of also in the 
uh, electronic part and also in the software. But by using ROS, you can just uh, contribute yourself. You can just focus yourself uh, on, us, on a software uh, if you have interest in a software. And ROS uh, is a heterogeneous devices. Uh, this ROS is not okay. Yeah. ROS can be used in Ubuntu, Android, uh, iOS, uh, or even in Arduino. Uh, ROS is not homogeneous. Homogeneous is uh, that can be used only only one device. But ROS is heterogeneous. It can use in many devices in uh, many applications. And ROS can run multiple concurrent tasks. It can run a task simultaneously, like this robot. This is a Curiosity Rovers uh, that sent to the mask, uh, like one. AFT cross beam. Uh, this one is uh, one, uh, like I said, this is uh, maybe one program. Uh, wheels to move the robot. Uh, this is one program. Sample catching system, collect rock cost three by robotic arm. And this is uh, one program. And cameras to detect the environment, this is uh, one program. So how do we want to communicate uh, like cameras? Okay, cameras detect obstacle. Uh, so the wheels need to stop. How do we want to communicate each other? Like a brain. Uh, so we use ROS as our platform to control all of these systems. Okay, and it can run uh, multiple concurrent tasks. Uh, it means that uh, this runs simultaneously. All of these uh, run simultaneously. And ROS have been used uh, year by year. Uh, the using of ROS is increased. Okay. Like uh, in 2011, only 290K robot is used using ROS. But year by year, uh, in 2017, uh, almost 13.4 million robots using ROS uh, from mobile robot, I mean, aerial vehicle, industrial robot, and until automotive also use ROS to program the robot. And then uh, user of ROS is increased, uh, like we see in 2011, uh, the number of new papers is only 177 papers uh, that produced, and in 2016, uh, it is increased. And then the, the number of users, uh, the number of wiki users also increased. Uh, this is the open open source, uh, it means open source website. Uh, so we can uh, take the tutorial or the uh, package, uh, like uh, navigation package, you can take it from the wiki. And then uh, if the user is increased, it means that the knowledge uh, and the libraries also increase and ROS is become strong year by year. And then next, uh, yeah, ROS is free and open source. You can download any package uh, you want to implement on your robot, uh, like uh, maybe you want your robot to pick up something. So there is a package in this uh, www.ros.origin. Uh, you can take it from this and it is free. And ROS, uh, ROS is not just a tool actually, but it is a community. Uh, ROS is a community that's uh, a strong community uh, supported and improved by a large community with a strong focus on integration of the robot, uh, on develop uh, of the robot. And in and uh, start from 2012, there is a ROS conference uh, until 2019. Uh, it means uh, it's not just a tool uh, like uh, Windows, there is uh, a community in there, in the ROS. Uh, so this is a uh, ROS conference in 2019, but 2020 and 2021 uh, is just a webinar conference. Uh, and all of this is a robot developer, which is uh, using ROS 
So if the user is increased, it means that uh, the knowledge of the ROS of the robot is increased. Uh, and it makes ROS strong because it has community. So uh, next is after we know uh, what is ROS, uh, why are we using ROS, why are we using ROS, ladies and gentlemen. By uh, ROS, we know that uh, ROS is uh, a software framework for robot to program. And why ROS? Why we use? Why we choose ROS? Maybe one uh, can answer. One of us can answer. Yes, because it is open source. It is free. Okay. Because this is open source, uh, we can we can program the robot. Uh, uh, like we know, we just know Python. We just know uh, Python language only. So we can program our robot using Python only. Yeah, it is a multi-language. Good. Okay, what more? Yeah. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, because it's peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer, uh, it can communicate. Uh, even uh, this robot, uh, even this program, and this robot, this program is uh, coding with uh, another operating system. This program is another operating system. You can communicate each other. That's why ROS is very powerful. Uh, if you want to develop a robot, okay. Okay. Next uh the first the first question is how ROS works actually how ROS works so how ROS works uh we need to know uh what is notes what is topics and what is message okay okay notes uh this is notes this is topic this is notes okay i give an example oh, wait eh? Okay, I give uh, a simple example like us, human. Okay, this is a publisher. This is a subscriber. A uh, publisher is a node, and such subs and subscriber is a node. Okay, this is uh, node one and this is node two. Okay, node one will publish a message. Uh, like uh, uh, like I'm talking. Uh, maybe uh, this publisher talk. Uh, I am Amirul. So I am Amirul is a message. So how we want to deliver I am Amirul uh, to this person, to this subscriber, how we want to deliver it? We use topics. Uh, uh, do you have play uh, in your, uh, in around 10 years old? Okay, this one. Okay, okay. I am Amirul is the, is the message so how do you want to transfer the message i am amiru to the subscriber we use topic uh, so uh, this example is use string string as a topic so message is what i'm talking about okay okay understand okay uh, okay okay this one note is published uh, a message to a topic and then this person can subscribe uh, the message from this topic okay like this one i give an example uh, like this one uh, maybe this one uh, a simple robot uh, okay this is a sensor this is ultrasonic sensor or we call the distance sensor uh, when it detect when it detect the detect the ping pong ball when it sends the ping pong ball so it sends some data same data to the actuator. So how do how do the this sensor need to sense the data, uh, which is a distance? It means that uh, this ball is uh, is close uh, to us. You need to slap it. Uh, how do this sensor need to sense the data to the actuator? So we need 
Uh, so this sensor need to transfer it, need to publish it to the topic, to the topic. So Ross cannot, uh, Ross cannot communicate each other without a topic. Okay, uh, it's uh, the it it needs topic uh, to communicate it. So sensor will uh, publish uh, some data uh, to the uh, to the topic. And then uh, actuator will subscribe uh, the the data uh, the message which is uh, the ping pong ball is uh, close to us. You need to select. And then after the actuator is listened uh, to that message, and then uh, this this uh, motor this actuator will select the ping pong ball uh, like this one. Uh, if the distance of the ping pong ball is uh, less than five, then the actuator will slap uh, the ping pong ball. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, how ROS works between uh, nodes, uh, topics, and messages? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Okay, yes. So uh, this is uh, uh, a simple example. Uh, a publisher is a camera. It's a sensor camera. So a camera will send, will send, will publish a message which which is a raw data of image. And then the subscriber is a one node. Uh, this subscriber is a node uh, that have an algorithm uh, to compute it and to detect our face. To detect our face. Oh, so this is uh, one of the example and then uh, nodes communicate over topics, nodes can publish or subscribe to a topic, and typically uh, one publisher uh, is published to end subscriber to many subscriber uh, like this, distance, distance sensor is published uh, to a subscriber A, subscriber B, and topic is actually a stream uh, of a message, for a message. Okay. Okay, that's uh, how Ross works uh, using uh, topics and messages using notes. Uh, notes is a one program. It means that uh, this is a one program. This is actuator uh, is one program. How to communicate each other is using uh, topics. Uh, this sensor will uh, publish a message to a topic, and this one is subscribe to a topic and then slap the ping pong ball. Okay. Uh, and this one is another tools, another application for programmable interface, another ROS API, which is services. Uh, topics, uh, topics is uh, different than services. Okay, my battery is low. I need to first charge first, sorry. Okay, we continue. Okay, services is different from the topic, uh, which is service, uh, it need to be request first. Uh, so uh, the this node one is a server and node two is a client. So the client need to request first, like this one. Uh, what time now? I uh, need to ask first uh, the, to the server and then the server will answer. Uh, now is 12. Now it's 12 uh, a.m. So rather than topics, topics, uh, this one is just keep talking. Publisher, uh, this not one is just keep talking. Uh, although uh, there is no subscriber, uh, maybe uh, this, subs this subscriber uh, uh, have no subscriber, the public is keep talking. If you want to take uh, the message, uh, we just listen to it, okay? Like a radio, uh, the the host yeah is just keep talking. If you want to hear, uh, we hear. But this one, uh, services, uh, the client need to request first. 
and then the server will send the message to the client. Uh, it is also uh, one part of the uh, ROS API, ROS Application Programmable Interface. So that's how uh, a program uh, with a program uh, communicate each other. That's how uh, ROS can control uh, the program. Okay. So uh, after we, after we know uh, how ROS works and what is application uh, we can use, we can build with a ROS. And firstly, uh, if we don't if we don't have a hardware robot, uh, we can build a robot uh, in a simulation. Which is uh, this one is used gazebo simulation. We can build. Uh, a AMR robot, uh, autonomous mobile robot, we can build a robotic arm. Although we don't have robotic arm, uh, we can uh, build it in simulation and then we implement it later in the hardware. Uh, also, Ross can build a drone or even a, a, rep, a aeroplane or a car. It can build uh, by using only simulation and then you can implement it later. Uh, in your real car or a real aeroplane. And then ROS also can build uh, an environment. Uh, you can do a simulation. You can build a home environment, a factory environment. Uh, you can build an agriculture, also agriculture environment, and although also road environment. Uh, you can build it. Uh, okay, a parking environment, uh, urban environment, and uh, this is uh, the most powerful part of the ROS. Uh, if we don't have robot, if we don't have the actual robot, the hardware robot, it's okay. You still can build a robot by using a simulation. And then later, if you have money, you can implement it uh, in your real robot. Okay. Okay, like this one. Okay, you can program uh, the robot as the simulation, and this is uh, the simulation one. Okay. Hello? Okay. Okay, this is the turtle bot. This is a turtle bot uh, robot, uh, which is AMR, autonomous mobile robot. Uh, this uh, one is just uh, in a a simulation in a gazebo simulation. Uh, so this robot uh, is uh, the task of this robot is need to uh, mapping the environment, need to map the environment uh, like this house. Uh, so uh, this is Arvis. Uh, Arvis is the visual visualizer for the sensor and the robot. Uh, and then uh, it means that uh, you can build your algorithm uh, just in the simulation. Okay. Okay. And after the mapping, uh, it means that the task of this robot is done. Okay. Uh, this is for simulation. And also, you, uh, Ross, after, after we build the robot uh, in the simulation, Okay. Okay. Uh, also, ROS can be built uh, in uh, your real robot. Uh, is it? It is a same task, right? Uh, you can see this. Okay. okay you can see this. Uh, a gazebo is like an environment. Uh, it is a tools in ROS. It's like an environment, like our house. Uh, it is an environment. And this is a visual visualizer. Uh, you can visualize it. Uh, the robot can visualize the sensor uh, and the algorithm. Uh, and uh, although we uh, program it in a simulation, but it can meet uh, the preference that we want to build in a real robot. Okay, uh, it means the simulation and the uh, in the real world, uh, the 
algorithm is same. It means that uh, we can run it, although we don't have a robot, uh, we can run it also uh, in the uh, simulation and then we can run it after uh, we build our robot, uh, we can test it in our uh, real environment. Uh, so that's why ROS uh, is good for us to develop uh, some robot and test it. Okay. This one, uh, the robot is mapping the environment. Okay. okay, this one of uh, a ROS application, a robot application. Okay, and, and ROS has built uh, some cells actually. Uh, this is uh, from, this is a social proof of ROS that this robot is uh, developed by ROS, by robot operating system. Uh, like this one is uh, Embark company. Uh, it is uh, automotive, automotive uh, company. Uh, Simbe robot, uh, farm wise uh, built robotics and six river system. Uh, six river system is used in manufacturing. Uh, uh, in a factory, uh, this is the most, uh, the most. Uh, popular uh, of robot that use uh, ROS, which is in a factory, uh, need to pick up uh, something and need to send it to some places, uh, Six River system. And we can see it uh, like this one. How can we create a world where roads are safer, goods move faster, and drivers are closer to home? At Embark, our singular focus is making this future. We built the Embark Driver, automated driving software engineered from the road up for trucks. Yeah. It uses a sensors first architecture. It's like an, a Tesla that is less dependent on maps and more capable of yeah. handling the unexpected. With a state of the art perception system, the Embark driver sees, understands, and predicts so what is going to happen next. Uh, Combined with sophisticated planning and control systems purpose-built for trucks, it anticipates and reacts to dynamic road environments 10 times faster than us, always keeping freight and other drivers safe. Meanwhile, the Embark Universal Interface maximizes availability by ensuring the sensors, processing, and controllers needed for automated driving are compatible across OEM platforms. To guarantee exceptional reliability, we built Guardian, our innovative remote assist and monitoring system. So At this Embark, is one it's our mission to bring commercially viable the... automated trucks to public. Make the most advanced. And this one is a Simbe robot. Uh, also developed by Ross. Just use this symbol robot to detect uh, if there is uh, the stock is out of stock or not. Uh, this. Okay. This is a stock check uh, robot. Okay. Uh, and this is the FarmWise robot. At FarmWise, we're building the future that growers deserve. And today, we are, we are a, proud to deploy a new this class of farming equipment. Our machines leverage robot. AI and robotics to remove weeds from vegetable fields. They do so without these machines recognize okay, plant detect, species even in the... Uh, you can detect the plant species and, and it can detect the weed. Uh, 
and then uh, this robot have a robotic arm uh, if detect a weed then the robotic arm will take the weed uh, take out from the uh, plantation from the plant from this farm the most difficult yeah. conditions they also evaluate weeds and mechanically uproot weeds down to the accuracy of a centimeter this technology helps be the world with farmers we leverage these machines so ross make us easy to build a robot and then uh, this is a six river system which is uh, using in a factory you can walk you can find a bin That robot also can search on items. Uh, then it autonomously going uh, to what we have. They can hantar. Okay, uh, robot ni dia akan hantar lah barang-barang. Contoh kita nak barang ni hantar ke sini. Uh, jadi robot ni akan hantar autonomously kepada uh, tempat tu so dia tak perlukan macam UGV lah, underground guided vehicle lah. uh, underground guided vehicle dia perlukan uh, macam line dekat bawah untuk dia bergerak uh, jadi dia akan ikut line tu tapi uh, yang ni dia adalah AMR uh, auto autonomous mobile robot uh, dia, dia just perlukan map dekat dalam factory tu uh, dia, dia akan pergi uh, pergi ke tempat tu uh, dengan autonomously uh, dengan hanya tahu environment dekat situ ok ok uh, and now uh, ROS application have been used in a gigantic uh, company uh, like BMW, uh, Bosch or in a Microsoft, uh, Intel, also uh, ROS have been used uh, in our world, uh, in our company. So uh, ROS is actually a very powerful tool uh, to build our robot. And, and hopefully you understand what I'm explaining about ROS. This is just an introduction of ROS. Uh, it means that uh, you don't know uh, actually how to program a ROS, uh, how to uh, communicate, how to uh, use a command uh, because this is just an introduction. Maybe later uh, Dr. Zoraini or uh, ROS community of you time uh, can do some classes uh, how to program a ROS. Okay, uh, I hope you understand what I'm explaining, what I'm presenting. Uh, uh, that's just uh, for me. Thank you. Okay, thanks to speaker, speaker Mr. Amirul. Okay, we hope that we get some idea in rose from this webinar and hopefully it help us in our research and our work after this. Okay, uh, if there is question from um, audience, participants, if you want to ask, you may uh, open your mic or you may chat. Okay, there is one question from Mr. Hane, which is where to start for beginner. Okay, inshallah. After this, we plan for next session. Maybe it's great if we have some hands-on on simulation using ROS, right, Amirul? Uh, right, Amirul. Uh, yeah. so using simulation, then using ROS. Okay, maybe if you want to start a class, we, we, we will uh, iklan kan macam, macam this webinar. Okay, hands-on session. Maybe you can handle it online. Right, Amirul. Yeah. Ah, uh, betul tak? Kita kita plan lah nanti. It's great uh, for us. Uh, boleh. Plan. Okay. Ah, uh, 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 mungkin kita boleh plan. Uh huh. 
Okay, there is one question from Mr. Muhammad Saimi. What is the different, uh, what is the ROS and MQTT? MQTT, eh? Uh, MQTT, say tak. Say tak, uh -huh. the, the, the MQTT, if someone, uh, Mr. Muhammad Saimi, or oh, free SMS. What apa? Dia untuk IoT, eh? MQTT ni. Maybe you can open your mic. We, we had some fruitful discussion, maybe. Uh, mungkin uh, ini adalah satu discussion. Uh -uh. Um, saya Communication saya protocol, saya MQTT, uh. from Ubay Dongwa. Oh. Uh, ah, yeah. ya. Uh, okay, MQTT saya tak pasti, tapi mungkin saya boleh jawab pasal ROS dulu. ROS, haa. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, ROS now move to ROS2, right? What difference ROS and ROS2? Uh, uh, actually, uh, ROS, uh, there is others. ROS1 ada macam... Uh, ROS, uh, ROS1, uh, dia, dia ada masalah. Contoh macam, uh, it's not a real-time operating system. Uh, and ROS2, uh, dia counter counter masalah tu dekat ROS1 tapi ROS1 sebenarnya kita boleh uh, buat real time tapi coding kita kena uh, kita kena programkan robot kita dengan real time tapi ROS2 walaupun uh, program kita programkan robot tu ini apa yang saya baca tapi uh, saya tak pernah guna lagi uh, ROS2 okey uh, apa yang kita programkan dekat ROS2 uh, it is a real time if we implement it uh, to our robot uh, it's more advanced uh, than ROS1, but the basic uh, is uh, is in ROS1. The basic of ROS2 is in ROS1. So uh, what I'm explaining uh, just now is uh, is a ROS1, uh, but uh, ROS2 also the basic of ROS2 is uh, in a ROS1. Okay. Mrs. Queen can actually transport MQTT. Yeah. Oh, okay. communication ha. protocol. Eh. Okay. How Set. to start? Where to start using ROS? Any simple application? Maybe there is tutorial, Amirul, from the tutorial lab. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, say uh, how to start or where to start using ROS? Any simple application? Okay. Uh, I learned ROS. Uh, if you heard the construct, uh, you can type on your phone or on your laptop uh, the construct uh, community, the construct application. Uh, I learned from there. Uh, there is uh, many classes, many class uh, in the, the construct. Or you can also uh, learn uh, in YouTube also. Uh, but uh, the construct I, I think it's more is uh tersusun tersusun structured. Uh, it's more structured uh to to learn ROS uh because it start uh from the very beginner uh as me uh from beginner uh learn ROS and now uh learn ROS from the the construct application. Uh, some classes there uh you need to you need to pair it, uh, but also uh, uh, ROS, I think uh, ROS community, uh, UTM ROS community also uh, will uh, start a class maybe. Uh, how, uh, how to use ROS? Uh, uh, uh. Is the, the link from the chat correct, Amiro? Can you, yeah. uh, can you see the chat? That they Paste the constructsim.com category host tutorial. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 correct. Okay. okay, okay, that's the link for the construct. Okay, uh, Jika say that, okay, huh. Jika say that install ROS1, adakah saya perlu format PC dan install ROS2? Uh, mungkin apa ada Dr. Hidayah ke? Okay, see me. Uh -uh. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, uh, hello, Senko. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so kalau dah uh, encik dah install ROS One, uh, uh, perlu ke uh, format eh? Uh, uh, nak kalau nak run uh, concurrently tu, uh, uh, sebab uh, uh, bila install uh, so uh, ROS uh, normally run on Ubuntu, right? Uh, Ubuntu operating system. So dia ada uh, compatibility tu macam uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, 16 ke kan Ubuntu 16 dengan uh, ROS Kinetic. So dia ada uh, version compatibility tu. So if you want to run ROS 2, uh, install ROS 2. So uh, kena uh, install Ubuntu yang uh, compatible uh, with ROS 2 uh, which is uh, Ubuntu version 20. Uh, plus, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, 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 I mean, if uh, uh, this is to avoid uh, any other uh, apa, uh, issues yang uh, kita tak nampak. Uh, okay, uh, I, I hope that answer the question. Okay, thanks Dr. Hidayah. Okay. I think, uh, okay, Amirul may stop sharing. Okay, uh, stop sharing. Okay. Okay, I think uh, this is the, okay, for all participants, I hope that uh, you can feel free to, to to fill out the feedback form uh, from the link that I paste in the chat. And before that, i like to... Uh, share with you. Okay, this is the okay. Now, you team Ross community from um, our community. We, we, actually, we, we are from the small group. Okay, uh, from Dr. Kairi from FKE, Dr. Aliza from FTKEE. And Dr. Inor Hidayah just now from FKEKK, Putem and me. Actually, I, I, I just joined this and uh, with me, there, there are uh, Dr. Siti Azira, Dr. Asmala, Dr. Shuko, Dr. Sazalin Shah from Faculty Technology Maklumat and Komunikasi. And we also have Dr. Muhammad Nazrin bin Muhammad from Faculty Kejuruteraan Pembuatan. And we also have uh, Dr. Aira from Nuclear Malaysia. Uh, uh, his, uh, uh, Dr. Aira doing uh, research on Turtle Board 3. Okay, this is our recent activity in this 2020, which is last month. We are doing uh, training for Turtle Board 3 and ROSE training. This is uh, in Makma Kebutiaran Buatan 2, FTMK UTEM. And we have this robot from FTMK. Okay. And if you have question, if you want to collaborate with us, you may email us through this email. Okay, then I will, uh, for this session, I will upload it into uh, FTMK channel, YouTube. Okay. 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 So, I'll stop sharing first. Okay, and uh, uh, last but not least, uh, if we, uh, jika boleh saya nak nak ambil gambar bersama for the first uh, our our community session for this 2020. Okay, mohon buka kamera semua jika boleh. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Amirul bantu juga tau. Saya saya kadang-kadang lambat sikit. Okay. Okay. So, kita tunggu lagi sekejap ya. Mungkin ada nak cari camera ke. So, terima kasih. Uh, sebab saya uh, mau uh, harap ni selepas ni kita ada lagi lah collaboration if you have some research, if you have some project nak invite kami ke sebab kita daripada pelbagai faculty ada orang matematik, ada orang image processing, ada orang apa pembuatan dalam tu. 
engineering. Uh, so, ya, sebenarnya kita buka kalau nak join kita punya community group ni pun boleh. Okay. Saya lupa tak tahu apa dia. Okay, so uh, terima kasih. Saya harap uh, boleh isi uh, feedback form sebab kita nak uh, tahu feedback daripada program juga untuk kita punya program community akan datang. Okay and uh, harapnya uh, semua dapat yang manfaat from this session and see you in next community webinar or next uh, ROS community group punya program. Okay, um, ya, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Terima okay. kasih semua. Terima kasih. Thank you.